Welcome to Weekly Sawal with Bani Abroad, episode number two. For those of you who are new to my channel, I make videos that will give you an edge on starting and settling abroad. I have started conducting a weekly Q&A poll on my Instagram handle Bani Abroad and I answer queries which I get on that poll on my weekly YouTube video. So if you want prompt replies to your queries that is within one week then make sure that you subscribe to the channel and also follow me on my Instagram handle Bani Abroad. I have my laptop in front of you so pardon me if I am not looking directly at the screen when I'll be reading the question. So the first question is from Ara he's asking which course will be better for me I have done BTEC in mechanical engineering so Arafat to answer your question you can either pursue something in your own field that's mechanical you can pursue a master's or a PG diploma course in that but if you want to explore new things and want to have a switch and you are not that interested in your existing field of work then you can pursue masters like masters of management or you can pursue master in business analytics so there are a variety of other specializations also that you can consider the second question comes from Cheryl and the question is what is the status for completing MBA in India and then searching for work in Canada so Cheryl, uh, I don't know if you have already started your MBA or if you are just considering. So my advice would be that if you want to settle in Canada, then consider doing an MBA from Canada itself. And if you want to settle in India, then the same goes there. Do an MBA in India. But if you are currently pursuing MBA in India or have graduated from that, then my advice would be to apply for PR if you are eligible because a lot of employers wouldn't be willing to sponsor you for a work visa. So it gets easier if you have a PR and when you get your PR, then make sure that you tap into your professional network. You talk to your alumni who are now working in Canada or other friends or relatives that you might have here because reference and networking play a very important role in Canada to get a job. The next question is regarding jobs as well. So it's from Mithali. She's asking if the one year post study work permit is enough to find a job. So Mithali answering your question, yes, it is enough, but then you also have to consider it from the perspective of getting your PR. If you do not have any work experience in India, then you need to complete one year of work experience in Canada and then you can apply for a Canadian experience class and file your application for the PR. But if you waste your one year in just searching for a job and not actually gaining that experience, then there would be a problem in terms of getting your PR. One another thing to note here is that if you pursue masters, you will get 30 points. Whereas if you pursue a PG diploma, then you will get 15 points. So that can also make a huge difference. The next question is from Varsha. She is asking if there are any Canadian universities offering two-year MIM program. Answer to this is that when I was searching for MIM programs in Canada, most of them offer one-year program, hence your question. The universities or the B schools though that were offering a two-year program, but that was a slight variation. It was either master in international business or master in global management so uh, the top ones were ivy business school queens they had a two-year program but then it was either msc or it was masters in international business before answering the rest of the questions i would like to share one anecdote so what happened is that i was going to record this video and i opened up my instagram and i looked at the notifications to get the questions but I couldn't find those because they had disappeared and I was going crazy what should I do and uh, if I should answer questions that are already in my inbox but then it wasn't seeming fair so I searched on the internet no answers there and then I was just exploring the app and since I have a business account so I found it in the inside section and here I am but lesson learned I will click screenshots as soon as I get the questions moving forward the next question is from Amaina Amaina is asking about the strikes and if they happen often in Shulik this is an interesting question. So I did a one year degree in Shulek and yes, during my time here, there was one strike in York University, 
but I did not see any impact on the studies or anything in general. So I think it's okay. At least in Sholik, there was no impact felt. The next question is from Ravi. Is there any way to work in abroad? Yes, you can work abroad and you can settle abroad. So there are three methods for this. One is that you can apply for a study permit, study in that country and then work here. The second method is that you can apply for a work permit. But for that, you have to have a sponsorship from an employer here in Canada or any country that you want to work. And that gets difficult because you are competing with people who won't need that. And the employer would have to go an extra mile in order to give you a job because then he or she will have to do that extra process for you. And the third thing is that you can file for your PR application if you are eligible. And then once you get your PR, you can come here and start working the next question is from pru frog the crab the question is which universities did you shortlist for yourself for mim so i applied to four universities and i got into three and the universities that i applied to were one was sholik school of business from where i did my masters of management the other three universities were university of waterloo and university of texas which is in the u.s and the third university in which I didn't get in the B school that was Ivy Business School. So in Ivy Business School, the course was Master in International Business. And in the other two universities, the course was Master of Management Science. There's another question from the same person and it's did you write GMAT for applying to MIM course because York doesn't specifically ask for it. So I did take the GMAT exam, but I didn't submit the score for Shulik because it wasn't asked. But for the other universities i did submit my score the next question is from arusha i've heard that tuition fees in canadian universities is less than the ones in the us is it so yes that's a correct observation if you're applying to the same program in the us then the fees would be higher not just because of the exchange rate but also because of the inherent higher tuition fees in the us the next question is from harsh route to pr after a single year course eight months most of the universities do not offer masters which are just eight months it, it's usually at least one year so that gives you one year of work experience and if you have done a pg diploma then it gets difficult because you only get 15 points as opposed to 30 points if you pursue masters so if you do not have any work experience previously in india then that would get very difficult so the suggestion is that you apply for one another course and then you will get three years of work permit and then you can eventually file for your pr the next question is from berlin how to know about the scope of a course and what are the after jobs one can get that's a really good question and you should research about that before taking up that course so kudos to you for asking that and the best way to find out that is to talk to people the best way is not to go on the website and look at the average salary or the median salary because some figures can be misleading or inflated and the students who have actually done that course and are now in the industry would give you the most accurate picture so get on linkedin and talk to people the next question is from jaskirat my old classmate hi where are the most tech companies in canada for jobs like product managers people would tell you that there are jobs all over canada and that's true but i see a major influx of startups coming in toronto region and so Toronto is becoming the Silicon Valley of Canada. There are a lot of startups mushrooming here and startups do require technical people because most of these days they require apps and websites. So in Toronto, it would be the highest and then also in Vancouver. But Toronto is the clear winner. The next question is a concern which many people have regarding the weather here. It's from Shalaka. Is the condition worse for the snowy days with respect to office, college, travel and day-to-day -day work? Of course, it would not be as sunny and as bright and convenient as in summers. 
but everything is manageable and everything is centrally heated inside the buildings so you just need to brave the weather outside and if you have a car then you skip doing that but if you're not it's okay just invest in the right winter gear and you'll be fine and if there is something huge coming up like a snowstorm then you will get a notification so that you don't step out of the house that day or if you have to then you take the proper precautions the next question is perfect for me because i got the same bands as in the question asked it's from jia please tell tips and tricks to get band 8 in ielts that's an interesting topic to make a video on so i'll make a video so that everyone can benefit and i can go in detail but for now i'll say practice 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 and if you have started from an english medium school it wouldn't be that difficult having said that don't get overconfident and don't underestimate the exam because it's not about how fluently you are speaking but it's about how you take the exam and how you nail it according to the things that they want in the exam. The key to that is practice and I'll make a detailed video on that so that everyone gets a detailed response. There's another question from Shalaka security with respect to a woman coming to Canada. So answering that holistically, it is a safe country and there would be lesser instances of these kind of things. But then having said that, all kind of people live everywhere. So I can't guarantee if you would be immune to things like catcalling because I have seen catcalling here and witnessed that myself. The other question is about SOP points. So I have made one video on SOP. I'll link it in the description box. The next question is sweet. It's actually not a question, but a compliment. Thank you, Joshua. Uh, and I don't want to post, so I wouldn't be reading it. The next question and the last question is from Joshua. Does work experience from India make a difference? Do people prefer consultancy or sales jobs? And specifically, what about Indians? Okay, so regarding this, a lot of people have different opinions on this. For some people, they had to start from scratch. For some people, their experience acted as a strength in their job application and it made it easier. I think it depends on the skills. So if you have experience in a very skill oriented job then that would be an advantage responding to the second part about consultancy or sales jobs it entirely depends on the person what are their interests and if people are interested in sales and marketing they would take up that kind of job and people who are interested in consulting would take consulting so there's no hard and fast rule and it depends on what the people want to do and what about indian so i didn't get exactly uh, what is the context but again this is generic and it's applicable even for indians so this brings us to an end and i hope that i did justice to the questions that you asked and my responses were helpful and if anyone has any other query then be on the lookout for my next weekly q a poll and i'll entertain those questions and i'll respond to them promptly i do respond to dms also but then i give preference to this because people are going the extra mile and participating in that let me know in the comment section if you want any changes in the way that the weekly sawal is built and if you want me to add something i'll take your feedback and make changes to the weekly sawal series according to your your feedback and thank you for watching this video if you have any questions you can participate in the next weekly q a poll and until my next video take care stay happy bye